Hello everyone. Welcome to the Grade 12 Biology, the Nervous System course. Today, I am going to talk about neurons. If you have not done so already, I highly recommend you to download our free mobile app called Grade 12 Biology, the Nervous System Study App. A link is provided in our YouTube description. It has lectures, flashcards, and quizzes that are related to this topic. Again, it is completely free. And it is available on both iPhone and Android. So, what is a neuron? A neuron is a type of cell that specializes in transmitting electrical and chemical signals. A general neuron cell consists of four parts. In the order dendrites, cell body, axon, and synapse. So, let's talk about the dendrites and cell body first. Dendrites carry signal from the other neurons to its own cell body. Whereas what the cell body does, it, it consists of normal cell structures, such as cell membrane, nucleus, etc. Axon. Axons carry signal away from the cell body. Many axons are covered in something known as the myelin sheath that are made up of Schwann cells. In between of the Schwann cells of the myelin sheath lies the nodes of Ranvier. Signals propagate through the axon by jumping from the node of Ranvier's within the axon. Synapse. At the end of the axon lies the synapse, the end of the neuron. In a synapse, calcium ions stimulates neurotransmitters on um, vesicles and these neurotransmitters binds on the postsynaptic membrane. This binding causes the attached dendrite on another neuron to depolarize. So the general function of neurons is to send signals from one part of the body to, the, to another part. What they use is something called a action potential. When the neuron is not propagating signals, the neuron is usually at a resting potential of minus 70 millivolts. During the period of resting potential, there would be greater concentration of potassium ions than sodium ions within the neuron. The high concentration of potassium ions are held by sodium-potassium pumps in order to maintain a negative potential. When the neuron is stimulated strongly enough, all or none response, to reach a certain threshold, the first stage of action potential occurs, which is known as depolarization. The amplitude of action remains the same, no matter of the degree of the stimulus. Depolarization occurs when the sodium gates are open and closing the potassium gates, causing sodium ions rushing in but potassium ions cannot get out at the same time, making the neurons having a positive potential, which is around plus 40 millivolts. Once it reaches approximately 40 millivolts, a period known as repolarization occurs, 
which the sodium ion uh, sodium channel closes and the potassium channels to open, causing a drop of potential. After repolarization, potassium gates started to close, making the overall potential hyperpolarized. This means that the potential is more negative than the resting potential, usually around minus 80 millivolts. After hyperpolarization, sodium and potassium gates would then be open, putting the neuron back to resting potential. Action potential cannot initiate without the neuron back in resting potential first. This concludes our lecture. Thank you for your listening. Remember, like us or subscribe to our channel for more updates on our lecture materials. Also, download our free app for your iPhone or Android if you have not already done so for flashcards and quizzes that are related to this lecture. Also check out our website um, as shown in our video description on YouTube for apps and lectures for other units. Thank you. Bye-bye.